Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is the maximum power transfer theorem as applied to AC circuits. Our objective is to learn at which load conditions the circuit delivers maximum power to variable load impedance. Additionally, we'll discuss efficiency at and at other than maximum power conditions. Bottom line up front, AC maximum power transfer theorem is the DC maximum power transfer theorem with phasors. I cannot make it much simpler than that. This lecture therefore operates under the presumption that the viewer has more than a passing familiarity with both the maximum power transfer theorem as applied to DC circuits and AC power calculation as illustrated in the DC maximum power transfer theorem and the AC power lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel. Additionally, this lecture operates under the presumption you are marginally skilled in Thevenin's theorem as applied to AC circuits. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. If you recall, the maximum power transfer theorem as applied to DC circuits states that a variable load resistor will receive maximum power from a circuit when its resistance is equal to the Thevenin's equivalent resistance for that circuit. The maximum power transfer theorem applied to AC circuits is almost a direct repeat with a subtle twist. The maximum power transfer theorem as applied to AC circuits state that a variable load impedance will receive maximum real power from a circuit when its impedance is equal to the complex conjugate of the Thevenin's equivalent impedance. This is to suggest that maximum power is delivered to a variable load when Z load equals ZTH in magnitude, but is opposite in angle. This subtle twist should not be a surprise given our previous understanding of AC power. Recall that AC power consists of real and reactive dimensions and capacitive and inductive reactive power have opposite polarity the equal and opposite reactive elements effectively cancel each other out such that the source sees only the series combination of the resistive portions of the Thevenin's equivalent impedance and the variable load impedance. If you have prior experience with resonant circuit analysis and or power factor correction, you'll note the similarities. Equal and opposite reactive elements effectively cancel each other out. In order to keep this introductory lecture brief, Let's limit to solely the discussion of the maximum power transfer theorem and not complicate it by including Thevenin's theorem. For those seeking additional practice beyond these basic concepts, rest easy. There's another lecture featuring several illustrated examples of Thevenin's theorem and the maximum power transfer theorem with your name on it. For now, let's just consider a complicated circuit that has already been simplified into its Thevenin's equivalent as the Thevenin's equivalent voltage source ETH having a value of 80 volts at an angle of 0 degrees in series with a Thevenin's equivalent impedance, ZTH, having a value of 200 ohms at an angle of 20 degrees. Let's see if we can analyze conditions of maximum power for this circuit. The maximum power transfer theorem as applied to AC circuits states that a variable load impedance will receive maximum power from a circuit when its impedance is equal to the complex conjugate of the Thevenin's equivalent impedance. The complex conjugate of 200 at an angle of positive 20 is 200 at an angle of negative 20. Don't make the complex conjugate operation hard. If something has a positive angle, make it negative, and if something has a negative angle, make it positive. We should therefore expect maximum power conditions when our variable load impedance equals 200 ohms at an angle of negative 20 degrees. Too easy. Delving deeper into this analysis, you'll realize the variable load impedance at 200 ohms at an angle of negative 20 degrees, expressed using polar format, has a value of 187.9 minus J68.4 when expressed using rectangular format. Given the negative imaginary reactive component, the variable load at maximum power conditions is most likely a 187.9 ohm resistor in series with the capacitor that happens to present an impedance magnitude of 68.4 ohms at the given excitation frequency of 60 hertz. An algebraic rearrangement of the capacitive complex impedance formula solving for capacitance suggests the capacitor has a value of 38.8 microfarads. Similarly, you'll realize that Thevenin's equivalent impedance ZTH at 200 ohms at an angle of positive 20 expressed using polar format has a value of 187.9 plus J68.4 when expressed using rectangular format. Given the positive imaginary reactive component, the Thevenin's equivalent impedance ZTH is most likely a 187.9 ohm resistor 
in series with an inductor that happens to present an impedance magnitude of 68.4 ohms at the given excitation frequency of 60 Hz. An algebraic rearrangement of the inductive complex impedance formula solving for inductance suggests the inductor has a value of 181.4 millihenries. Algebraic manipulations aside, it should be obvious that the equal and opposite reactive portions effectively cancel each other out. Let's now examine the electrical properties of the circuit at maximum power conditions. Let's now examine the electrical properties of this circuit at maximum power conditions. An application of the AC voltage divider rule suggests voltage across the load will be 42.6 volts at an angle of negative 20 degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law suggests current through the load will be 212.8 milliampers at an angle of zero degrees. Despite the use of absolute references, it should be obvious that current through the load leads voltage across it by a relative 20 degrees. Additionally note, since equal and opposite reactive components cancel each other out, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage source effectively sees only the resistive portions of the Thevenin's equivalent impedance and variable load impedance. As such, source current appears to be in phase with the Thevenin's equivalent supply voltage. An application of the AC power formula suggests our load experiences 9.1 volt amperes of apparent power, 8.5 watts of which is directed towards real power, and negative 3.1 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. This represents the peak real power this circuit is capable of delivering to any electrical load. If our load was set to any other magnitude or any other angle, it would dissipate less real power. Before examining electrical properties at other than maximum power conditions, it's perhaps worth a moment of our time to more thoroughly examine the maximum power condition itself. You'll note at conditions of maximum power, an application of the AC voltage divider rule applied to the Thevenin's equivalent impedance ZTH demonstrates ZTH will experience a voltage drop of 42.6 volts at an angle of positive 20 degrees. And an application of Ohm's law or basic series circuit properties demonstrates ZTH will experience 212.8 milliampers of current at an angle of zero degrees. The AC power formula suggests ZTH also experiences 9.1 volt amperes of apparent power, only this time 8.5 watts is directed towards real power and positive 3.1 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. The reactive power component is equal in magnitude yet of opposite polarity as that experienced by the variable load impedance. Let's now examine power for the complete circuit. There's a couple means of doing so. First, apparent power in equals apparent power out. Note apparent power can be considered as having both a magnitude and a direction. Accounting for angles, apparent power delivered to the Thevenin's equivalent impedance ZTH is pointed at an angle of positive 20 degrees, and apparent power delivered to the variable load impedance is pointed at an angle of negative 20 degrees. You note know, the equal and opposite angles serve to moderate each other's influence. Substituting our given values, use a total apparent power figure of 17 volt amperes at an angle of zero degrees. Additionally, one can solve for total real and total reactive power individually using a similar technique. Total real power equals the summation of individual real powers. Similarly, total reactive power for this system equals the summation of individual reactive powers. Substituting in our given values, use a total real power figure of 17 watts and a total reactive power figure of zero bars. Is it really zero of ours? No, no it's not. At maximum power conditions, the equal and opposite reactive elements cancel each other out. Finally, one can directly solve for total apparent, real, and reactive power using any variation of the AC power formula applied to the complete circuit. Apparent power is the complex conjugate of our Thevenin's equivalent voltage times our source current. Substituting our given values, we arrive at an apparent power figure of 17 volt amperes at an angle of zero degrees. Resolving this into its real and reactive components demonstrates total real power to be 17 watts, and total reactive power to be zero bars. Importantly, these figures verify our earlier calculations. Note at conditions of maximum power, the Thevenin's equivalent voltage source is supplying 17 watts of real power to the whole circuit, yet only 8.5 watts is getting to our load. This is to suggest that maximum power conditions although representing conditions of peak real power delivery, aren't exactly the most efficient power delivery conditions. At conditions of maximum power, 
This represents an efficiency of only 50%. It needn't be surprising that maximum power conditions are not efficient conditions. Maximum power conditions are as inefficient as efficient conditions are less than powerful. Speaking of conditions at other than maximum power conditions, consider the following scenarios. As an exercise to the viewer, I invite you to calculate the apparent, real, and reactive power delivered to the load, as well as the efficiency of real power delivery for the following load conditions. 200 ohms at an angle of positive 20 degrees, 200 ohms at an angle of zero degrees, 84.7 ohms at an angle of negative 53.8 degrees, and finally, 504.7 ohms at an angle of negative 7.8 degrees. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. You note it may be helpful to resolve the impedance values into the rectangular equivalents before resorting to extensive calculations. You should notice something very interesting for the last two scenarios. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. In the occasion when the variable load impedance is 200 ohms at an angle of positive 20 degrees, we might anticipate not equal and opposite amounts of reactive power canceling each other out as in the maximum power condition, but rather consumption of twice the amount of reactive power. As a result, real power delivered to the load might be less. Let's see if this is the case. An application of the voltage divider rule suggests voltage across the load is 40 volts at an angle of zero degrees. A subsequent application of Ohm's law suggests that current through the load will be 200 milliampers at an angle of negative 20 degrees. The AC power formula suggests the load experiences 8 volt amperes of apparent power, 7.5 watts of which is directed towards real power, and positive 2.7 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. As one might expect, real power delivered to the load isn't as large as maximum power conditions. In this scenario, efficiency is 50%. In the occasion when the variable load impedance is 200 ohms at an angle of zero, we again might anticipate not equal and opposite amounts of reactive power canceling each other out as in the maximum power condition. As a result, real power delivered to the load might be less. Let's see if this is the case. An application of the voltage divider rule suggests voltage across the load will be 40.6 volts at an angle of negative 10 degrees. A subsequent application of AC Ohm's law suggests current through the load will be 203.1 milliampers at an angle of negative 10 degrees. Note, given the load is purely resistive in nature, voltage and current appear to be in phase with each other. The AC power formula suggests the load experiences 8.2 volt amperes of apparent power, 8.2 watts of which is directed towards real power, and zero of ours is directed towards a reactive interchange. As one might expect, real power delivered to the load isn't as large as maximum power conditions. Efficiency in this scenario is roughly 51.5%. The remaining two scenarios illustrate something interesting. In the occasion the variable load impedance is 84.7 ohms at an angle of negative 53.8 degrees, this presents an impedance of 50 minus J68.4 when expressed using rectangular format. Note the imaginary reactive portion is in fact equal and opposite to the imaginary reactive portion of the Thevenin's equivalent impedance, although the real resistive portion is substantially smaller. As such, we might anticipate equal and opposite amounts of reactive power to cancel each other out, as in the maximum power condition. However, given a smaller resistive portion, we might expect it to draw more current, however experience a smaller voltage drop. As a result, our load will dissipate less real power. Let's see if this is the case. An application of the voltage divider rule suggests voltage across the load will be 28.5 volts at an angle of negative 53.8 degrees. An application of Ohm's law suggests current through the load will be 336.2 milliampers at an angle of zero degrees. Note source current appears to be in phase with the supply voltage, a clear indicator that equal and opposite amounts of reactive power are canceling each other out. As we anticipated, the smaller load draws more current, but experiences less of a voltage drop. The AC power formula suggests the load experiences 9.6 volt amperes of apparent power, 5.7 watts of which is directed towards real power and negative 7.7 bars is directed towards a reactive interchange. As one might expect, real power delivered to the load isn't as large as maximum power conditions. Efficiency in this scenario is only 21%. Finally, in the occasion when the variable load impedance is set to 504.7 ohms at an angle of negative 7.8 degrees, this presents an impedance of roughly 500 minus J68.4 when expressed using rectangular format. 
Note the imaginary reactive portion is in fact equal and opposite to the imaginary reactive portion of the Thevenin's equivalent impedance, although the real resistive portion is substantially larger. As such, we might anticipate equal and opposite amounts of reactive power to cancel each other out, as in the maximum power condition. However, given a larger resistive portion of the load, we might experience a larger voltage drop, however, draw less current. As a result, our load might dissipate less real power. Let's see if this is the case. An application of the AC voltage divider rule suggests voltage across the load will be 58.7 volts at an angle of negative 7.8 degrees. A subsequent application of AC Ohm's law suggests current through the load will be 116.3 milliampers at an angle of zero degrees. Note source current appears to be in phase with the supply voltage, a clear indicator that equal and opposite amounts of reactive power are canceling each other out. As we anticipated, the larger load experiences more of a voltage drop, but draws less current. The AC power formula suggests the load experiences 6.8 volt amperes of apparent power, approximately 6.8 watts of which is directed towards real power, and negative 925 millivars is directed towards a reactive interchange. As one might expect, real power delivered to the load is not as large as maximum power conditions. Efficiency in this scenario is 72.3%. Power is not nearly as high as maximum power conditions, although this scenario represents a far more efficient means of delivery. You note with both magnitude and angle being variable quantities for our load impedance and AC power having both real and reactive dimensions, the maximum power transfer theorem as applied to AC circuits does not readily lend itself to easily discernible graphs as did the DC maximum power transfer theorem. This being said, I hope the last series of illustrated examples demonstrated an important point. It should be obvious that maximum power conditions are occasions in which equal and opposite amounts of reactive power cancel each other out. If the load has too much or too little of a certain type of reactive impedance, this balance is upset. As a result, real power delivered to the load would decrease. Even in scenarios with equal and opposite amounts of reactive power, real power delivery only peaks when the real resistive portion of the load equals that of the real resistive portion of the Thevenin's equivalent impedance. A smaller resistive portion of the load would experience more current but less voltage. Similarly, a larger real resistive portion of the load would experience more voltage but less current. The maximum power condition represents a compromise condition in which not one, not two, but rather three interrelated quantities, voltage and current and power factor, a mathematical byproduct of relative phase shift, form a maximum product. In summary, a load impedance experiences maximum power conditions if and only if it is the complex conjugate of the Thevenin's equivalent impedance. All right, that's about it for now. We'll examine illustrated examples of Thevenin's theorem and the maximum power transfer theorem in later lectures. In conclusion, we learned a variable load impedance will receive maximum real power from a circuit when its impedance is the complex conjugate of the Thevenin's equivalent impedance for that circuit. Additionally, we discussed electrical properties like voltage, current, apparent, real, and reactive power and efficiency for various load conditions. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.